Hello, Viking fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Viking Talk with Coach Josh Morgan. I'm Brandon Davis, and as always, great to have with us Warren Central Head Football Coach Josh Morgan. Coach, great to see you again. You too. Congratulations, Coach. A big win this past Friday night, a playoff 13-6 clinching win. Tough conditions at Clinton, Coach. Uh, just a, a rainy night, nasty all the way around. Talk about the game and, and how proud you are of the team. Well, it was a, a big game, and, and we, we knew it going in. We knew what was at stake, and uh, really proud to see our kids respond when their backs were to the wall. And I mean, it was really uh, do or die for us, and uh, it was good to see us respond. Uh, and, and the conditions really didn't uh, bother them at all. They were they were excited to be in the game, excited to uh, play in it, excited what was at stake, and I thought that showed. I thought we were the more um, – spirited team and uh, just ready to um, just did a really good job of, of uh, preparing themselves. I thought it was our best week of practice and uh, uh, just super proud of, of our guys and uh, you know and, and how they carried out the game plan, how they competed. Uh, and it was really good to see something good happen to them and uh, on such a big stage. Well, a fantastic defensive effort holding the arrows to 60 yards rushing. You didn't allow a touchdown all night either, Coach. Discuss what you and the staff observed from the game and what stood out to you the most about the defensive play. Yeah, we, uh, we had to play good. I mean, they, uh, uh, they wanted to, to control the clock. They wanted to control the ball, field position, and all that comes with that. And uh, they were going to basically try to uh, put us in the phone booth, so to speak, in a confined area and just out physical us and out man us. And uh, that was going to be the challenge, and we knew that coming in, and our, our kids rose up. Uh, to the challenge and uh, really competed hard, played well together, really physical and tough and tackled well. And uh, uh, we needed that and, and uh, we put a, put a lot on them and uh, they responded. Uh, I don't think they could have responded any better, just played really physical and uh, uh, we've gotten so much better from where we sit right now. You know, um, uh, rather than earlier in the year, we, we've just improved and our kids have really worked hard and. Uh, and uh, it was really good to see us in that kind of ball game against a uh, team that really wanted to out physical us, and uh, we won that match. Well, coach, you took care of them running the football, but they seemed like in the second half they went more to a shotgun approach versus the hybrid wing tee that they were running. So a complete change of scheme. Your team, they've been out there, they've been stopping the run, but they were able to manage what they were doing as far as throwing the ball. I had to be impressed with that as well. Yeah, you know, we, we prepared. They, uh, it wasn't just the wing tee that we prepared for. It was multiple things. Again, they have a, uh, a really dynamic receiver who anytime he touches the ball, he can score. Uh, and we, we always tried to know where he was and, and kind of uh, cater our coverage to him and uh, to make sure we knew where he was and to keep him in front of us. And we gave up some things, but we didn't give up the big play. And uh, we knew that that wasn't their forte and uh, we wanted to keep him in front of us and make them earn everything. And, uh, got some big sacks uh, mm -hmm. as well in the game, and uh, so it was uh, just just complete effort, uh, not only defenses but really all three phases. Well, coach, uh, one of the key plays of the game, sophomore safety Jason Williams, he intercepts quarterback Caleb Miller. We get the ball at our own 18, about 36 seconds left in the first half. Yeah. You drive the field field goal to tie it up at three, going into the half. That might have been maybe one of our more impressive drives of the season, coach. What were your thoughts on that? It was, and uh, you know we we. Uh, uh, Parker did some things that uh, you, you can't coach. You just have to kind of feel your way through it. And, and uh, we, we, uh, he was able to move around and kind of uh, we had caught a screen play and, and uh, it didn't develop as we had planned it. But uh, KT found a way to get open and Parker found a way to get it to him. And he really picked up the big chunk of the yards. And, you know, once you get something that positive on the first play, it allows you to, you know, kind of pick your tempo up and truly go for it. So if you if you get a negative play there, you're just going to run the clock out. Mm -hmm. uh, but we picked up some good chunks there, and uh, he was able to find Antonio Thomas over the middle for another big gain. And uh, we had two timeouts left, and we wanted to get a little closer for our field goal. And uh, Kendrick broke another big long run. It got us all the way down, I think, to the 15-yard line. And uh, but the thing is, about that time is when it started raining the hardest. It did. When we sent our field goal team out there, yeah. and it was a really big, really big play in the game and uh, you know and uh, Darius Smothers uh, our, long, our short snapper and Tevin Bell our holder 
uh, just in those conditions. And if you ain't ever played in it, you don't really understand it. It's tough. And uh, they were able to get the snap and hold down. And, and uh, Josh was able to get a good plant with his plant foot and really get a good kickoff and, and good drive. And I really think that was the, the difference in the ball game because uh, we go into halftime with all the momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, really gave us a, a shot in the arm, and uh, kids really ramped it up at that point in time going into halftime. So it's a tale of two stories uh, between the two teams going into halftime based off how we finished the half. So it was really good to see and watch us execute on that. Well, about that, you had the ball, you're moving it, and you get down there, and I know that – uh, earlier in the game, Josh missed a field goal. He didn't get his footing right, and he slipped, and we missed one. So you're driving the field like that against Clinton, and you're so close to the end zone. Any temptation to maybe try to go for the touchdown versus the field goal there? Well, you know, there's a thought process there, but uh, we, we, we feel comfortable with Josh, and yeah. uh, you got to stick with you guys even through the ups and downs. And I uh, felt good about him and, and uh, felt good about our chances, and we knew if, how big of a uh, something positive some kind of points and we felt like that was our best bet well coach we talk about this time after time in these type of games special teams especially the punting game people don't think about the punting game but the punting game can be vital I thought Josh Griffith's performance was outstanding in the game what did you see from him yeah you know they they had one returner back there and it was EJ Mason their receiver and we didn't want to kick it to him but we we're also trying to get his uh uh, as much field position as we could, and Josh did a good job kicking away from him, but also getting adequate yards with it, and not, uh, you know, not not shanks and, and whatnot. But uh, he did a good job of, of doing that. Again, it goes back to Josh Hallberg and long snapping in those conditions and good snap, and mm -hmm. uh, Josh handling the ball. Those stuff is overlooked in those games, and uh, they just did a good job. And our punt returners, uh, Tevin Bell and Demond Patton, did a really good job. I, we didn't muff one single punt. Uh, we didn't. We fielded every punt, uh, and and we, you know, around here we've had to find ways to win, and uh, we do every little thing we can to win. And field position is one of them. There's so many hidden yards in special teams, whether it's a punt, or if it's just catching a punt and not letting it hit and roll another 20 yards. Mm -hmm. So uh, on a rainy night, and and uh, them having the confidence in themselves to to make those fair catches and just catch it, and really big for us and. Like I said, when it was a complete effort by uh, everyone in all three phases, uh, it truly was. Well, Coach, let's talk about Parker Kivett. He finishes the night with 172 yards and touchdown. Most importantly, though, he protected the ball in sloppy conditions. Yeah. Also broke a long run. It looked like, like I said, it looks like Peyton Manning running down the field. as a yeah. tall statue taking off. But what did you take away from uh, Parker's efforts? He did a wonderful job. Uh, and, again, it goes to him and Chris Winston with the quarterback at center change. Uh, on a rainy night and, and uh, managing his team. And he was very patient in a lot of things that we did. The touchdown pass he threw, he hung in that pocket as long as he could mm -hmm. and found DeMond slipping through uh, behind the linebackers. And, and uh, you know, those little things lead to so much. And, and uh, he just did a really good job of uh, being poised and uh, also really shifty in the pocket and, and, and uh, throwing good balls in not ideal conditions. and. Uh, you know, on that the, the long run he had coming out of the, uh, the opening drive of the second half, another momentum thing. You know, we, we had it at, at that time, and uh, they weren't respecting him on the read zone, and he pulled it and, and uh, got a good block from DeMond Patton down the field and, and really did a good job setting us up for big plays. But uh, uh, he, he played uh, very good and, and helped us win the ball game. Well, this is Viking Talk. We're visiting with Coach Josh Morgan. This week, a matchup against – the top-ranked team in the state and Region 2 leader, Starkville High. Coach, what should we expect from this Yellow Jacket squad? Well, very athletic. Uh, they, uh, they have uh, uh, had a wonderful year, have a storied, you know, historically tradition-type uh, program, and, and rightfully so, and uh, very athletic, uh, very good quarterback, and, and uh, uh, super skill around him. The receivers, he's got three or four receivers that are uh, really good, not only getting open, but ball skills and running with it after the catch and uh, defensively uh, very athletic very fast they'll they'll be in a version of the 3-3 uh, three, three, uh, that everybody seems to be going to these days putting more speed and athleticism on the field and uh, come at you from a bunch of different angles so um, very explosive on both sides of the football and uh, you know very very good and uh, physical and athletic 
Well, we faced a lot of good quarterbacks this year, Coach, but their quarterback, quarterback Luke Altmaier, he may be one of the best. He's thrown for over two, right at 2,000 yards, 22 touchdowns to four interceptions, but he's completing roughly 70% of his passes. Yeah. So how important is it going to be for the defensive line to really set the tone of the game and make him uncomfortable in the pocket? Well, he's, he's good. Uh, he may be the best one we play, and that's, that's pretty high praise. He, uh, gets, uh, he's got that uh, quick release on him. He, he looks like uh, you know how Dan Marino used mm -hmm. to get the ball out so quick. Uh, he makes really good decisions. You can tell he's a smart kid. Uh, does a lot of checks at the line. Uh, so his pre-snap and cerebral stuff is there. And uh, uh, so we, we have to do a wonderful job, uh, you know, every position on the field, playing together. It's going to take all of us. Uh, we'll try to disguise some things and uh, come at him from different ways and mix up some coverages. Uh, but we also have to find a way to pressure him. If we let him sit back there uh, and be comfortable, uh, it turns into a seven-on-seven seven type deal, and that's not what we want. We want to apply pressure, but we also have to uh, make sure we've got enough guys in coverage to, uh, to cover those athletes that they have. So it's a, uh, it's a, kind of, it's a thin line of how you attack him. We've got to be smart how we go about doing it. Uh, but we're excited about playing uh, uh, such a, a, a potent offense, and uh, you know we really, really um, feel good about our game plan. And guys are getting where they understand it, and uh, it'll be fun to watch it. So when you play a team like this that likes to spread you out and throw the ball, and they have several receivers that are capable of putting up big numbers, you run traditionally a four four man front, three linebackers. But in a game like this. Do you drop and maybe run two linebackers and bring in an extra defensive back, kind of a dog safety or something to that nature to, to help you uh, go up against a team like well, this? Well, well, we'll carry everything that we have uh, in order to stop it, and, and we're we're prepared to to use it all. And uh, from everything from six DBs to two down linemen to uh, three three ourselves, and and uh, several different variations, and and uh, we're going to do our best to. Uh, find ways to apply pressure, but also, uh, you know, making sure that we're we're good and have numbers in zone game, and and uh, so we got to be smart, and and we also have to make sure that our alignment is is good, and, and uh, make sure that we're doing our part. So again, this is another game uh, against another great opponent, but it's uh, in our minds, it's all about us, and we got to make sure that we're doing the right things and doing our jobs, and uh, uh, and it'll all come together. Defensively for Starkville, it starts with number eight defensive tackle Jalen Ware. But coach, you've talked about it. They have talent all over the field with that defense. Discuss the challenge that they propose, they pose for offensive line and what is going to be the best way to counterattack this defense. Well, they, they, they play with traditionally three down linemen, uh, but those three down linemen are so good and so big, it, it almost feels like it's five. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like you're getting to play with 13 players or uh, and, and uh, you know, we have got to be able to uh, find a way uh, to run the football. It's still, uh, you know, it's still our identity. Uh, we've, and, uh, and Coach Rob's about as good as they get as far as being creative and trying to find ways to run the football. And uh, got to be great in the passing games. They're going to crowd the box, and we know that. And, uh, there's going to be big plays that are open that, that, that we must hit. You know, we can't, uh, when we take shots, we've got to got to execute on them. And, uh, hopefully we can loosen them up a little bit, but uh, you know there's nothing wrong with a three-yard run. There's nothing wrong with a, uh, a four-yard run. And, and again, you know sometimes our backs hit up in there, and if it's not just wide open, they want to bounce it and try to make a big play. Uh, this would be one of those games where we stick our head in there and our nose in there, and uh, it goes back to our old make five, take five drill. Where we're just trying to get and be stay positive yards and not get behind the chains. Well, Coach, you have secured a playoff spot eighth year in a row. Congratulations. That's a big accomplishment yes, for, thank you. for any program. But discuss the importance of, well, you got the playoffs now, but discuss the importance of getting this win and one step closer to the Region 2 title. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, a credit to this group. Uh, you know, we went from having a win to get in the playoffs, and, and now where we sit, we control our own destiny. And... Uh, uh, but it goes from week to week, and, and uh, I tell you what last week's win does, it really takes a lot of that pressure off of you uh, as far as having to win and, and being in that situation. And now, uh, you know, it's almost like you're playing with house money, so Absolutely. to speak. You know, it's, we have nothing to lose. We weren't supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, we expected to be as, as the team in this field house, but, uh, you know, it, it really takes that off of you and allows uh, the kids to, 
and kind of free up a little bit and, and uh, just play and, and let it rip and be, be prepared as we can and, um, you know, take advantage of this opportunity. Well, bittersweet moment is going to be ahead for us this Friday night as it will be the last home regular season game for the senior class. Coach, is something that you have to deal with each and every year. Uh, you know, you, you're going to have a senior class. Discuss what these guys mean to you and how do you as a coach harness in your emotion leading up to kickoff? Yeah, it's a, you're, you're right. Bittersweet is a, a good word. It, uh, you're proud of them and, uh, you know, you can't really, you know, I learned this my senior my senior game uh, at Mississippi State, uh, they had a, you know, they brought us all out there, and it's emotional. And then you look <laughs> up, and the tall sweep's coming at you, and you got tears in your <laughs> yeah. eyes. So it, you got to be able to handle it the right way. Uh, this is not the end of the road, and and uh, it's just the way we recognize them, uh, and uh, you know, kind of that type deal. You know, we'll we'll hug their necks when it's all said and done, and really express ourselves. And uh, but the way we run our program is that we love one another. Uh, we really do, and we we. Uh, uh, we, we preach that, and uh, it's truly special to watch them grow up. And uh, uh, they, our seniors, we let our seniors run our team, and, and these guys have done a good job. It's not many of them. I think it's 15 left, and that's really a small number for, for our program, but there are 15 good ones. And uh, mm -hmm. so they've, they've been a good group, really done well leading this team. And, and, uh, but our, our focus right now is, is uh, you know, trying to, trying to let them, send them off with a good senior night. But again, the task at hand is, is the game, and we've got to make sure that we focus in on that. Well, how have the guys responded this week at practice, uh, and what are some injury concerns that you might well, have? Well, I tell you, they, they've, uh, they're excited. Uh, you can start to see their confidence level go up. Mm -hmm. uh, you can start them kind of see them. Uh, some lights are coming on in some of them, and they, they're starting to get it. And... Uh, it's always good to see, and, and uh, I think we're still getting better, uh, which is good to see as well. And uh, so we're definitely trending in the right way, and, and uh, you know, we've got a uh, – I think we're playing the number one and number two team in the state back to back right. the next two weeks going into the playoffs. That's so, right. uh, you know, uh, we're, we're just uh, – our nose is down, and we're working and, and uh, uh, getting better every week. And, and uh, uh, the biggest thing is to make sure that we're staying healthy and – um, praying for health while we battle and, and, and keep working and and uh, so it's it's uh, like I said it's it's all in front of us and the future uh, is what we make it and uh, that's that's what we're focused on as far as injuries goes you know the Clinton game was a physical game we've definitely got our bumps and bruises but uh, everybody else does too at this time of the year and uh, our guys are if they can walk they'll be ready to go. Parker Kivett took a pretty big shot toward the end of the game so he's going to be available. Yes. Yes, uh, he he, uh, he did take a good shot and uh, it busted his lip up pretty good, but uh, he, he's he's good, tough kid. So a couple of plays I want, don't want to get too deep into, but maybe controversial plays, the hit on Parker and the I think Malik Sims called for, they originally called it targeting. I didn't think there was targeting at the high school level. <laughs> what type of explanation did you get from the officials on those plays? No, there is no targeting in, in right. high school. They're spearing, yeah. uh, which is when a player is down and somebody leads in with their head or launches in with their head. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I have not seen that call, and in in I don't think ever as far as a, a, they actually called it as targeting, then he changed it as unnecessary roughness. Right. Uh, it was just it was a bad call, and uh, we, it, it, it uh, really affected the game because it put them inside a 10 when they got the field goal. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, Malik made a good play, and he, he didn't definitely launch at his head, but uh, the way Malik is, he's, he's Aggressive. coming after that ball yeah. and he's coming to get you. And, yeah. and uh, it was a big lick and they really ran into each other. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was a call and it's just like everything else. Once it happens, you got to go with it. But uh, uh, he, he is, a, is a, a, to answer your question, he said he led with his head and, and, and hit the other person's head. So uh, that was the explanation. Now you just go with it then, right? That's all go. you can do. Never seen, you know, never seen a referee change a call. I hadn't so. either. It was strange to see that happen <laughs> you know, on the field. I didn't know what they, you're not what they talk told them you. Out of it. That's right. So what's going to be the keys to beating the Startle team this week? Well, we've got to have some breaks go our way. I think, uh, uh, again, finding ways to win, and we're, we're prepared and, and uh, going to be prepared to, uh, to find every, every way to win as far as special teams and uh, going after punts and, uh, being good in, in that area and uh, got to gotta make some big plays in the, in the passing game uh, offensively. Uh, our receivers are going to have to make some plays. We've got to protect the quarterback and, 
uh, the possibility for big plays will be there. We've got to take advantage of it. And uh, defensively, uh, you know, I always tell our kids, you know, you ought to be licking your chops any team that throws it this much. Uh, it allows you to get after the quarterback. It allows you to bat balls down. It allows you to have interceptions. And uh, that's our mentality. It's, uh, you know, if they, they want to throw it around like that, it's opportunities. Uh, there's more things that can go wrong throwing the ball in it is good. And uh, tip ball, interception, a sack, incomplete. Um, so we want to take advantage of that. And, and uh, uh, But it's a tough task uh, for sure. And, uh, again, it'll be, a, it'll be good to, to see our guys get after it. Well, Coach, congratulations once again. Thank you. Just means we're playing more meaningful football, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It's important. a good, good thing around here. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the show. But before we leave, I want to thank each and every one of you that came out last Friday night in Clinton. I know I'm still waterlogged from that event. That was a wet, rainy night. But thank you for your continued support of this program. Next week, we take a long trip north to Batesville to close out the regular season against the Tigers of South Panola. Kickoff time's at 7 o'clock. I certainly hope that you'll join us for that game as well. That's going to do it for this week's edition. He's Josh Morgan. I'm Brandon Davis. We'll see you next week. Until then, rise up, Vikings.